Good afternoon, everyone. So happy to be here today to talk about Brixton. Uh, Brixton trades on the TSXV under triple B and uh, on the OTC under triple uh, BXF. So our forward-looking uh, statement, I uh, urge you to, uh, to read it at your, at your leisure. I, I may be making some forward-looking statements, so I need to caution you on those. So I'm going to talk uh, really about two projects today and, and mainly focus on the Thorn. As you mentioned, uh, as Derek mentioned earlier, we, we hit a, a big hole uh, recently. Um, so I'm going to talk about that and then we talk a little bit about our uh, uh, most recent uh, activities in the Atlin Goldfields camp. Um, so basically the goal really is to, on both of these assets really, even though we've made some strides, uh, we're still gunning for that, uh, that big discovery. Uh, we think we're getting close, uh, closer than, than we've ever been on, on, on the Thorn project. Uh, a little bit about the team. Um, I'm a geologist by training. Uh, we've got a, a very talented uh, team and, and board, mostly geologists, uh, geologists weighted, i.e. the discovery uh, potential and, and opportunity I think lies, lies there. Um, but, uh, you know, we work well together and uh, we've had some successes. I guess each one of these uh, persons on, in, in the management and on the board have had some successes uh, previously. So those are our share structure. We're about uh, 90 million shares out. Uh, last time I looked, I think we were trading around 23 cents. Uh, Monday we announced the, uh, the news of our whole. I think we traded almost 11 million shares. Uh, some 80% uh, increase in, in the day, uh, which is obviously encouraging. Um, so we traded, I think, this week so far about 25 million shares of our, our 90 million share uh, float. So it gives us, uh, I guess, about a 20, a sub, sub 20 million market cap. Um, and it says here about, uh, about 2.7 million as, uh, as the last quarter in cash. We're pretty proud of our, our shareholder roster. Uh, management has significant skin in the game. As you can see by, by some of the names, uh, Mr. Rob McEwen is a significant shareholder, uh, Gold 2000, and a couple miners, uh, Hecla Mining and Pan American Silver, and, uh, and Mr. Eric Sparat as well. So in this map shows, I know it shows four projects, but I really want to focus on the, the BC assets, uh, Atlan and, and Thorn, and I guess what I'll say briefly about the, the other assets, uh, they're, they're silver-weighted assets, and we'll, we'll be looking to monetize those um, uh, as the silver price uh, continues to move higher, I suspect we'll get some inbound interest uh, uh, in, in addition to what we have. So fairly low, uh, low holding cost, uh, low, low requirements uh, on the assets. So we, they're, they're all wholly owned, um, but it's really uh, all about BC this year. And, and given that they're about, I know on the map it looks like they're next door to each other, but about 120 kilometers separates uh, the, the two projects. So you probably heard about the Golden Triangle. Um, we're in a sort of northern uh, extent of that, uh, similar, uh, similar rocks. Um, and I guess we're, we're out a little bit out there only because uh, um, there's no road access in here. But this is not necessarily a new discovery. Um, this was originally dates, dates back to 1959, was a Kenco discovery when they were first using helicopters for mineral exploration. And it's been worked by probably a dozen operators uh, off and on um, until we got involved. In uh, 2010, 2011 was our, our first drill season, and uh, so we're we're pretty excited about it. It's it's grown. It's uh, almost a thousand square kilometers of, of land tenure that we wholly own. Um, it's it's a big package, um, and if you, I'll show you a couple slides in a, in a minute, uh, the, the scale of this thing is 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 pretty intriguing. But you know, if you're not that familiar with northern uh, northwest BC and the Golden Triangle, you know it's probably one of the most prolific uh, gold copper belts in the world. Um, it should actually be not named a Golden Triangle. It should be named a 500-kilometer gold belt because that's really what it, what it is. Uh, there's some major deposits in, in, this, uh, in this area. So uh, where I guess most of the historical work has been on, on the project, we're calling it the, the Camp Creek Corridor or Camp Creek Target. You can see up on, on the left-hand side of the screen. Most of the historical work was done, done there as well. Uh, and the Oban zone, the Glenfiddich zone, the Talisker zone. So that corridor, that area is one of our primary uh, porphyry targets. We believe that these, uh, these indications of near surface mineralization, which is about two square kilometers, is really just a footprint, a signature for a deep seated uh, rich porphyry copper gold system. And this is one of what we think are potentially many um, on, on the property. 
Um, in 2014, uh, we decided to step out a little bit from, from this area at the Camp Creek and focus on this outlaw zone, which is a, a sediment-hosted uh, gold uh, system. Um, we've only done about maybe a half a dozen holes at about 150 meter centers, and it continues to be uh, mineralized along strike. So we're excited maybe one day we'll get back and, and, and do some more work on that. So I don't think we fleshed out the best, uh, the best results yet on that. But really the, the focus for us uh, at Thorne is really to, to prove up uh, one or more large scale porphyry systems that one of these major companies is, is gonna wanna own. In 2014, um, it's interesting because as we were doing work at the, the, the Camp Creek and the Outlaw Zone, of course it's all helicopter supported here, we were flying, flying over to the Outlaw Zone and we kept looking at that uh, Chivas uh, area as a big alteration system. We kept saying, as we're looking out the helicopter window, yeah, we gotta go there and, and look at that thing. It looks, looks pretty good from the air. But it took us, uh, see our first program was 011, so it took us three or four years before, before we got boots on the ground. Um, but now it actually represents one of our largest uh, targets on, on the property. There you can see the, uh, the Chivas zone. This is a copper, uh, copper in soil, a geochem anomaly. The, the footprint of the uh, Chivas zone is, is between five and, and seven square kilometers, uh, depending on whether you're looking at the copper or, or, or the gold. So it's, it's a big system, it's a big footprint. Um, and so this camp is really not, it's not an isolated uh, gold deposit here or there. We think it's all connected, it's all related to some degree. Um, and the scale of this thing where we've been working is you know, something like 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers within the 1,000 square kilometer land package. Um, you can look up, I don't know if you can see those numbers, probably not very well from where you are, uh, the Oban zone. Lots of high grade copper, up to 30% uh, plus copper, and some of the highest grade gold samples that came out of this area, um, eight ounces or something per ton. So good, good grade and, and uh, high grade copper. They're coming out of these veins that are really, we think, are linked to, uh, to this uh, porphyry system. And you can see where we drilled the deep hole, where it's in red there, um, on the Oban uh, diatreme. Um, I know this map really doesn't do it justice, but what we tried to do here was uh, take a, a cutoff because when we had all the samples on here, it was just too busy. So we said, well, let's just use a high cutoff. We took a five gram gold or a 5% uh, copper, and you can see all those little boxes, um, if you can see it. There's a presentation here if you want to have a closer look at it. Um, but you're talking about a two kilometer by one kilometer uh, area of, of interest where, where we're working. So the blue, uh, the blue uh, uh, on, on this map represents drill holes uh, greater than a, a gram of gold equivalent or 0.65 copper. So we think this thing, all this stuff you see here is all related to one, one big system here. Now what's interesting uh, is that we drilled some ho uh, holes around the Talisker zone in 2011 and we actually tagged into uh, what looks like another Oban Breccia zone, another diatreme. So we think we may have two of them. Uh, we just don't know the size of it because we just have one, one hole with a piece of it in there. But what I've, what I've tried to cartoon here is the, uh, this hole one, 150. Uh, that's, our, that's how many holes have been drilled on the property. Uh, the, the 550 meters of almost two grams of gold equivalent. So it's gold, copper, um, silver, and, and a little bit of lead zinc. But within that, you've got about 277 meters of three grams of gold equivalent. And if you reduce that down to a smaller, higher grade interval, 136 meters of about five grams gold equivalent. And there's some really high grade copper. We have a six meter uh, interval of three and a half percent copper, uh, plus gold and, and other metals. Um, we, we stopped the hole at about 830 meters. And just at the bottom of the hole, it actually looked like uh, it's still an anomalous gold mineralization. Um, so I think what it's telling us, and then a bit of work that we did on, on some of the previous drilling, uh, in 2013 we drilled this hole called 121, and uh, we hit some uh, high-grade copper veins uh, in that hole. But I think what's uh, starting to uh, show to us now, after we have gone there and re-logged it, is we're seeing uh, porphyry signature uh, A-type veins in the bottom eight meters of that hole. So the work that we're doing, slowly but surely progressing uh, towards uh, what we believe is, is a major porphyry system, one of, of possible uh, many on the property. And probably the most significant uh, thing that we saw in the hole was the fact that we saw these increased mineralized porphyry clasts starting at about 429 meters. The deepest hole ever drilled in this area was about 371 on a vertical basis. So we've almost doubled the extent of the mineralization at depth. But the fact that we're getting those mineralized porphyry fragments is telling us that there's a porphyry somewhere near here we just need to vector on to where that, where that thing is, and that's gonna be our job over the next, hopefully the next campaign, 
um, will, will lead us into uh, this big porphyry that is looking like it's, it, it, it exists. There's evidence for that. Uh, we just need to continue to, to work this and, and uh, hone in on it. Um, this is just a table of, of the hole. It's uh, a lot of intervals for one hole, but it was an 830-meter hole. So some, some pretty good grades. Um, they got up to 5% copper, uh, 6 grams of gold. But it, obviously, it's a big, big, long hole, so you kind of blend it all together. Um, it's just a long section. I probably won't spend time on that. Let's just give you a sense. And the blue, again, is that's where it was drilled in this area. And uh, you can see how, on the red how much the mineralization was extended there. And over at the, over at the Glenfiddich, you know, 100 meter holes basically, uh, pr pr pretty shallow, generally speaking. So this thing, as far as we know, doesn't uh, daylight. Uh, we haven't seen it put our hands on or that surface, so we think it's, it's buried or, or preserved. Um, so which is a good thing in a sense that it hasn't been eroded away. Now on to the other poor free target on, on the property. Um, this is called the, the Chivas zone. This is the one that we flew over for years before we finally got boots on the ground in 2014. Uh, we've collected over 2,000 soil samples. We've done IP geophysics on it. And um, in fact, in 2017, we drilled about 10 holes, uh, mainly focused on the gold. Um, we had a, a different concept in, in mind is a deposit in Colorado uh, that was a gold tellurium system that we thought they had a better analog to but then we realized it was actually more like a porphyry system um, after the fact, which is always great. Um, but what's interesting is our last hole, 149, um, intercepted uh, 39 meters of 0.1 copper. So that's sub-economic grade, but you can see by the model that we're, we're really just, uh, I think, clipping the edge of it. And there's a picture on the left that shows a classic uh, B vein. These are classic porphyry signature veins. And uh, another interesting fact is that the, the, the age date we have from this uh, uh, this hole matches to the mineralization that we see on the Oban Breccia zone, which is four kilometers away. So we've got the Chivas zone, which is three kilometers long so far that we've mapped, and then we've got a, a two-kilometer uh, anomaly over on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the Camp Creek area. So two, two large uh, systems within, within a property, and uh, you can only do, only do so much with, with a little bit of money each year, but uh, it's been... Um, it's been a good project from that perspective. We continue to find, uh, find new mineralization every single year that, we, that we've been out there. Uh, There's just some more geochem. Uh, you can see the scale bar there. There's some of the holes that we have, have planned. Uh, uh, I, ideally for us, we'll get back in there in mid-August uh, with some new funding and, uh, and basically drill out the rest of the season on, on, uh, on this target and, and on, the, on the Camp Creek uh, target as well. Um, so it's kind of, the, the project is kind of morphed. This is the gold uh, geochem. Um, compared to the copper, the gold looks a little more isolated, um, but there's some good high grades uh, in, in there as well. Um, so really just get at the porphyry. Uh, we know it's a, a large scale system. This isn't a one-off uh, gold deposit. These are a large scale uh, porphyry targets, uh, has porphyry affinity, and uh, these things do tend to form in clusters as, as we're seeing. I want to talk a little bit about Atlan, uh, probably running out of time here, but uh, why did we get uh, interested in this area? Well, it kind of, when we started looking at this, it kind of reminded us of the Barkerville gold story. If you're familiar with Barkerville uh, gold mines, that, that uh, caribou gold fields ran for about 160 years. It's the, it's the oldest gold camp uh, in Canada, I believe, and Atlan is uh, the second oldest in camp, uh, 120 years of placer gold mining. Uh, interestingly, the records for gold production stopped in 1946, but they've been mining there for 120 years, so that 2 million ounces is, is a bit of a thumbsuck number because who knows, uh, on record is 400,000 ounces up to 46, so w what the rest is, we don't know. But look at some of these numbers here, 5.5 meters of 509 grams, uh, 2.6 meters of 27 ounces, um, bonanza grade, uh, gold. And interestingly, up until about the 80s, uh, Homestake did a good amount of work here in the 80s, but there hasn't been a lot of work here on, to trying to find the source of the hard rock. Um, been a lot of companies in here, but if you come out and see this site, you'll, you'll probably get an appreciation for the, simply the scale of it. Um, and the largest gold nugget in Canada came out of, uh, out of the Atlan area, 80 found, 85 ounce nugget. Lots of big chunkers. Um, this sample here was pulled from uh, one of the pits on Otter Creek. Um, what happens is the placer guys, they, they see all the good gold comes at the bottom of the, uh, the creeks right above bedrock. 
So when they get down to the bedrock, they usually scrape down there. Then they get the metal detectors out and see what kind of gold they can find. And this is one example of uh, some bonanza grade material in source uh, veins. So we're, we're uh, trying to build some rapport with some of the plaster guys to see if we can uh, work together to share some information as they're digging at the bottom. Um, but Homestake did put together a, a small resource. It's a non-compliant resource, about 150,000 ounces at, at 10. Uh, we're looking to uh, basically make some new discoveries here. Um, and really what, uh, what got us going, I guess, on this was the fact that there's, you know, multiple styles of mineralization. It's not just one, one kind of gold. There's several styles of mineralization here. Um, but very high grade non nonetheless. And even intrusion-related gold mineralization. Uh, which is probably more the finer gold that they see, thanks. So you get really those big coarse nuggets, but you also get some really fine, fine gold as well. And those are different kinds of gold environments to, to g generate uh, different kinds of gold like that. Um, so the yellow is just showing you the, the plaster operations, either historically or current. Um, we do see a Hackley gold. Um, I even pulled these out of uh, one of the guys that's uh, mining, actually, the, uh, where our camp is, has a little mom and pop operation. And uh, you can see some of the nuggets still have the host rock attached to them there. So we have four targets here, uh, Peak 2, Imperial, Yellow Jacket, and LD. These are all greater than 10 grams, multi-ounce hits have come out of here. Um, these are the primary targets that we have, and obviously we're going to look to generate new, new targets. But it's a fairly new target for us. We, this will be our first drilling campaign. Uh, we are actively drilling here. We anticipate the initial results here to come out in, in early August. Um, I also skip through that, the fact that it's free gold. Uh, this is the LD, this is where we're act actively drilling. Those are gold, golden soil hits. We pulled a nine ounce sample out of this uh, last year. Um, I guess I'll just wrap it up given the, um, given the time factor. I guess in summary, I'll just say that we believe we have a great portfolio that have you know, generated uh, high impact results and I think we can continue to do that. We've got a strong management team with skin in the game. And uh, so we're excited to, uh, you know, to keep at it. I think we're going to have a busy, uh, busy fall, so uh, stay tuned, and I appreciate your, uh, your attention. Thank you.